Yeah, but Observing. you guys like because it is one of the options like per the the player's guide for this. So like that's why it's like I would allow that. It's just I you guys would have to make a note of it because it's not going to show up in there. And when you roll for it, you'll have to remember that and add that's the you know the plus three or whatever it is for the bridge like the deck, well, top, like a tech roll. So there we are. it because yeah, it's just the way the character sheet Wait, is what designed. The fuck? What? <clears throat> so the Texas Synagogue Siege, apparently the hostage taker has been named uh, a not American. Yeah, he was asking for the release of uh, some Muslim terrorist. I forget the name, but I, I read the article this morning. Yeah, I yeah, I haven't. I didn't look into it very detailed, so I can't really say too much about it. But I just I caught the headline of it and. Demanding, demanding the release uh, of Ifi Sadiq, a Pakistani neuroscientist suspected of having tallies with Al Qaeda, was convicted of trying to uh, kill a U.S. military <laughs> officers while in custody in Afghanistan. Let me get the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's currently yeah. serving 86 years in a Texan prison. <clears throat> yeah, there's some big hostage situation there, and I don't know much. Bingo boom. Bingo. <laughs> <laughs> Matrix, did I catch you off guard there? Oh, I'm sitting here setting up and I'm just like, uh, you, uh, you're all live and I'm just sitting here laughing because I'm like, okay. <laughs> you just hear in the background, bingo boom. Bingo boom. Bingo. Ah. Bingo pop. Oh, that's a different sound. We don't want to... All right, let me swap screen so it fills the right screen. Put this over here. <laughs> uh, yeah, just, just let me know when you're ready, and we'll go uh, ahead and get started. Let's see. I need my character <laughs> sheet. So can... <laughs> this is why I put this one down. It's not for children. <laughs> if it wasn't labeled 18 plus, I would be more concerned. Yeah, it's been for the longest Just time. Just a second here. Okay, uh, and then I need... And we're going to do this. So everybody gets to see what I'm doing right now because I'm setting it up real quick. <laughs> I'm going back to power wash them. Hi, boy. Oh, come on. Dave's icon's not showing up. <laughs> Wait, is this the first game Bork's sitting in on, or...? Well, he's gonna be joining us halfway through. Yeah. Ah, ah okay. Turns out he's the Corsairs. <laughs> Dear God. No, 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 no. He's our first objective kill. I'm game. I mean, well, that's an interesting idea. Just, I, just I haven't thought about bringing in, like, people to play villains. But yeah, that's... An interesting concept that you can yeah, do. Yeah, no, I'm in a I'm in a server with a bunch of people who are voice actors, <laughs> okay. uh, and we do a D and D thing there. And our our GM will constantly bring people in <laughs> just to voice act uh, characters. Oh, serious? <laughs> and I, you know what? I'll I'll just say this: I'm not opposed to that idea if we have other people who want to do that. That would be actually handy. I oh, well, yeah. Oh, I mean, I gotta if, change my icon. If they're yeah, I mean, if you guys have interested, let, let them know. Let, let them come talk to me because I could I could pitch some ideas and we can we can have some real fun. We need new ghost voices. Absolutely. Poor Dad. Dave's Dave, gonna go nuts. Dave's getting tired of talking to himself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because the ghosts do have to talk amongst themselves. So guess what? I have to play two. I have to be multiple personality disorder. <laughs> Until you actually are. Uh, yeah, until I'm broken, but yeah, I'm not there yet. One of these days. Uh, We're not there yet. <laughs> We're pretty damn close. Uh, oh, wait. I can add that in while I'm sitting here chilling for a minute. Yeah, add, add in your stuff there real quick. I'm literally just doing power wash them until we're starting. And even then, I'm still going to play Power Watch to him. Yeah, that I'm not surprised by. Well, it's something uh, I can easily just stop and go back yeah. there once I'm done. Yeah, yeah. 
Fair enough. Because there's no hurry in this. So. There's always no hurry. hurry. I don't have any games like that. <laughs> I mean, I used to do it for War Thunder and World of Warships, and then one time I was coming, switching back into the game, and all of a sudden, oh, hey, that's the ground. Oh, wow, that's fun. <laughs> <laughs> so it didn't end well for me. Because my plane decided that it, the, the ground looked tasty at fucking 600 kilometers per hour. Uh, Dirt! <laughs> okay. Munch, 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 munch. <laughs> you paid it his looking all right. <laughs> yeah, I see you patching that up on the fly there. <laughs> Don't mind me. Uh, let me see. Uh... Also, Dave, if you're wondering which level I'm doing for uh, Power Wash Sim, I'm on the monster truck. Oh, I have not actually done that yet. That's a fun one. Oh, it's sorry. annoying as shit. Yeah. No, there's still one more annoying. Just give it time. Well, what the hell is it? I'm not saying. Say it, motherfucker, or else I'll search for it. Go for it. <laughs> oh, hi, fucking Microsoft. <laughs> All right, but while you're patching that up here, I'll, yeah. I'll go ahead and <clears throat> oh, let me get started. Here, let me kill the music. I got played. Oh, please don't die on me, payday. There we go. All right, uh, kill that. Uh... And then I'll have to fix Bork stuff. <laughs> yeah. I'll, do, yeah. I'll just do no, it bit no by worries. bit. I'll do it bit by bit here while I'm listening and trying to catch up. Oh, shit. I need my binder. Yeah, because uh, I got I to gotta give the recap, too. So yeah, you'll yeah. still have some, you'll have some time. So. Yeah, I'm not in a hurry, really. It's just I'm typing it in bit by bit. I'm like, oh, shit. All uh, right. Okay. Go ahead, Dave. You got the channel. I'm just sitting here doing everything else. <laughs> Okay, well, again, thank you guys for hanging out with us here on Twitch. Uh, if you guys are interested in, in the project here, dndestinyproject.com, you can download all the books, check everything out. Please show them some love, because without them, this game is not possible. All right, but with that said, let us go ahead and jump right back in. So, when we last left our heroes... Earl Shale, Elias Norwood, Theo Eleven, and their ghosts, Diving Bell, Paradox, and Nova, the party set out to meet out with the Awoken of the Reef. The party met with the representative, Juliana, to answer their questions regarding wish magic. After some discussion, the party was made aware that the Awoken knew about God Hand and that two Corsairs that were in pursuit of him have gone silent. Believing they may be corrupted by this new foe, Juliana asked them to, to have these two put down. Elias advised that capture might be best if it's possible. She agreed and gave the party the coordinates to their last known location, an abandoned storage facility in South Africa. Upon arrival, the party found the facility was sacked and a large number of crates were pulled out of the building with no sign of the Corsairs. Elias decided to do a search of the outskirts and came across a burned track that seemed to be God Hand's trail, leading straight out into the ocean. Making the revelation that God Hand seemed to be fast enough to run on water, Paradox devised a plan to access the greater satellite network to track God Hand. This would mean a return to the Cosmodrome. After dispatching a fallen group that was patrolling the area, the party now readies themselves to enter one of Rasputin's dormant bunkers. Uh, and also, before we begin, I do need to kind of clarify in game wise. Um, I have been meaning to level everyone up to level six. I have already gone ahead and did this. So, um, you guys may notice some changes to your character sheets. I have double checked everything. Your attacks are now up to speed, especially uh, Visor, your character, because uh, you were underpowered. Um, Fairly much, which really shouldn't have been. So we, I have you completely fixed up now. Okay. That All right. More things to die usually. Yeah. Uh, now, with that said, did you guys want to scavenge the fallen bodies that you had killed before you you want to move on? 
we killed things? You, you, yeah, you, you guys fought a group of Fallen before the end of our last episode. No, we didn't. Yes, you did. Yeah. We did? Yeah. Yeah. I'm game to search anything. off with me traveling. What the fuck? We ended our last session with combat. <laughs> I don't fucking remember that. What the fuck? Uh, maybe you should stop playing <laughs> games in between sessions well, so you pay no. attention a little more. <laughs> no, I don't honestly remember that, because I remember me going out thinking about the time bubble bullshit. Yeah, That's no, what we... I remember last. Yeah, no, we we got we you guys got to the bunker. You had there was a group of fallen out there. You finished off the fallen, and that's where we stopped. That's what I do. So, uh, right here. Are you honestly sure? Because that does not sound right. Honestly, we did fight. I fumbled a lot. I don't remember this fucking fight at all. Did y'all yeah. do a session without me, possibly? No, no. Weiser. We're no, all obviously. telling you... Yeah, but dude, we're all telling you we had combat at the end of last session. I, I'm not fucking remembering at all. That's why I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, we, we definitely had combat. I yeah. Say I, that. I must have been on the autopilot from hell. Uh, apparently, because you, this is you why don't we remember... Trade. Yeah, this is why you need to stop playing Power Wash Simulator well, during sessions. No, I, I remember most shit. That's why I'm like, what the fuck? Well, this is why it's been two, what, two, three weeks Yeah, I mean, almost? this is the other thing, too, like, because we've had to delay a couple times, like, this has thrown a lot of stuff off, but anyway. Oh, shit. So, dude. combat did happen. Um. Yes, I went to scavenge. There. Yeah. Scavenge. I want okay. to tear something apart and eat it. I mean, you know, get stuff from it. Okay. Um. So I want everyone to roll a d100 for me. Uh, where's my screens? Oh, down here. Uh, just the d100, like. Yep. Yep. Ninety-six. Ooh. Okay. Fifty-five. Okay. The figures. <laughs> What, that you get the singular digit? Yeah. <laughs> Figures. <laughs> what a reroll, man. That's I don't shot. even remember my shit. <laughs> yeah. I was on autopilot. I went blood lost. <clears throat> okay. Elias. <laughs> Hang on. Let me actually. Uh, <laughs> something else. I was like, fuck these guys. I don't remember <laughs> shit. I just know I'm here to kill. Yeah. Uh, right. Makes it entertaining. Uh, oh god. <laughs> okay. So Visor, you're gonna get <laughs> fifteen hundred glimmer and uh, on and on the corpse that you find, which is one of the captains, actually it was the captain, excuse me, uh, you find an old book. One second. I need to do old math book. because math is difficult in my head. Maybe that's why you can't remember. Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> I bet okay, you it's from hitting um, that roof. Yeah, that's a possibility. Uh, but... Okay, uh, I guess I'm gonna take a look at the book. Uh, it's it's an older book, probably a few hundred years old. Seems to be a novel of some kind. Hmm. It's likely uh, just something the captain probably picked up a scavenge along the way. Hmm. Um, I'm gonna carry it with me. I'm not gonna look at it right now. Okay. Uh, next, uh, Matrix, uh, you find 800 Glimmer, mm. and you also find mm. a jewel box in the shape of an engram. The jewel box is empty, it's just, it's just a little empty jewelry box. Again, it, it just, it's, it's a trinket. Woo! 
And then, Megu, lastly, you. You get 1100 Glimmer, and... <laughs> And you find a piece, a, a stick of celery. <laughs> I know what that's a reference to. All right. <clears throat> so after you guys have finished up your scavenging and you collect all of your goods, Paradox uh, makes his way over and he starts to examine the door. And he he looks he's looking over a panel. He's, you see him start to scan it. Seems like they locked it from the inside. Be just a moment. I'll get this open. Oh, what the fuck? Uh, is that for a game or? No, something I just heard in a song. It's like, what the fuck? Okay. Like, it just randomly goes, if you see this eight-year-old child, burn and kill him. It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> okay. All right, so uh, as, uh, as you wait just a moment, you'll start to hear mechanisms. <laughs> the doors slowly start to open. And it's a dark hallway down there. You can't really see much past about 15 feet. I guess I'll take the lead. Paradox joins you right at the shoulder and starts to shine the light inside. And goes, they locked it from the inside, but there's no power right now. That seems really odd. Uh, well, if it's in deep storage, then... It kind of explains why there's no power. All right, so do you do you start to walk down the hallway? I'm going to fucking look through and make sure there's no traps or anything before I do go through. Okay, um, make a... Would that be perception or investigation? 18. Oh, yeah, we'll say, yeah, we'll say perception. Okay. Um... You don't see anything visible. There's no trip lines or anything that you can see as far as visible traps. If anything, it'd most likely be like a laser or some shit. I mean, a laser or well, some kind no, of trip I'm, wire. I'm, I'm saying that in-game to the other guys. Okay. Hmm. Uh, any of y'all have a way to generate smoke? I don't have anything that would. Can't say I don't. Mm. All right, well, time to return to the city for smoke grenades. <laughs> Paradox just turns and looks at you. So you're not serious. No, why would I do that? I would reach down and just grab a handful of dirt and toss it in. <laughs> Okay, so you grab just a handful of dirt and you kind of toss it in. You're not seeing any lasers or anything. Okay. I'm just going to pick up a few handfuls of dirt and carry it with me as we're going in. So I can just okay, toss so it every once in a while. Uh, so is it kind of like a... You're testing traps and also kind of like a trail for you? Well, like not a really a trail. trail. Not re well, that too. Uh, but the other main thing is because, uh, since dirt particles can go airborne, it shows the lasers easier. True. So I'm not gonna trip over a fucking laser at one point randomly. Gotcha. Okay. Alright, so you, yeah, you pocket a couple of fistfuls of dirt, and you proceed your, your way in. And Guardian's best ally, dirt. <laughs> <laughs> and show you the way. Alright, so you guys start to make your way through these hallways. Your ghosts are, are pretty much lighting up the hallways. It is pitch black in here as the doors start to kind of close in behind you. Just automated closing. Hey, gosh, remember how you said there was no power? 
Yeah. Um, okay, so bounce. lights are not working. Or they're off for a reason. Yeah, something's not right. I got a bad feeling. Well, let's just keep our guard up. I'd like to go stealth. Right. Can I go stealth? Yeah, I'm going to do that too. Can I roll okay. for stealth? Yep, absolutely. Please. You guys can, can roll for stealth as you make I'm your screwed. way down the hallway. <laughs> I fucking net one, apparently. <laughs> Should I even bother? <laughs> I was going to say. Apparently not. Uh, I mean, you could at try. this point, um, okay, you guys, you guys have tripped. And... Even though I got a nat one, I still have a higher score than Matrix. Yeah. So yeah, like, you do. And... So somehow I'm even still stealthier than him while critically failing. No. I'm like, so, geez. okay, you, you guys both kind of trip over your own feet and big loud thuds <laughs> echo down the hallways. We just hear Rasputin in the distance. You fucking idiots. <laughs> they're, they're stumbling. Just a, a big robotic spot. voice comes over the speaker. <laughs> you idiots. I'm just walking. Those, those two, I, I don't know what Anyway, they're doing. anyway, anyway. So, you guys made a loud noise down the hallway. Uh, does anyone want to make perception to see if there's any noise in response? I, I will. Know it. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Might as well. Where's my screen? That time we don't fuck up. <laughs> but Theo does. Okay. I don't. Actually, well, I mean, I don't fumble at least. Yeah. <laughs> we did not do too well. Okay, then actually not going either. Okay, so Elias and Eros, you do hear hear a tapping, very quick, very sudden, just kind of a tap. It sounds kind of off. Like as you're standing in the hallway. It kind of sounds off to you, like to your right, but the hallway hasn't kind of extended out, so like there's really nothing that you can see to the right yet. But if you keep going further down, it'll likely branch off and go in that direction. Almost like spider clicking, almost. It was just like a like a tap, like you you can't really like tell what it was, but it was just kind of just like a. Hmm. Like, now Theo didn't hear that then, right? He did not hear that, no. So I kind of reached He was back. distracted by your thuds. <laughs> <laughs> just like, oh no. But I reach oh, back no. and tap on Theo and I just kind of point like we're hearing something ahead without saying too much too loud. Like we're hearing something ahead. Hammer out. Yeah, just in case. Thank you for okay. You got that fucking hammer. I love it. <laughs> Hammer. Bam. Hammer dawn. Alright, so you guys um, do eventually come to a fork in the hallway here. Uh, you can go left or you can go right. Uh, I want to break the golden rule. Uh, break it split up, huh? <laughs> no, I'm joking. No, I was going to say, okay. <laughs> I mean, we technically could. Uh, can we? Can I do a perception check right there to see if there's any like marks around or anything? Absolutely. Because I'd like to do the. Where's my perception? I just hit it before. There it is. On each. Oh God, I'm not seeing. Doorway it. though. Uh, I it's am dark. A handful of dirt. It is dark in here. Okay, so yeah. Uh... Or else you, you don't notice any markings. You can't see anything that, that stands out to you as far as any direction. Uh, Elias, um, so you're tossing it like a, a fist like to your left and to your right? Yeah, through each of the doorways. Okay. Um, so nothing pops up as you toss it down to the left hallway. You toss a little down to the right hallway. No visible lasers. Okay. Paradox just kind of looks over and goes, do you really want to split up? 
Preferably not, but I have a feeling we're going to have to. Uh, I can take the right. Oh, well, then who's going left? Why not? Because there's three different paths, correct? There's two. Ah, two. It, it, it splits off, so it goes left and it goes right. I'll go left. You take the right as well. You sure you're going to be good on your own? I'm a time. I'm supposed to be good on my own. That's debatable. Let's try and stay in the radio contact. If we start losing it, we head back here. Yeah. Agreed. We'll keep radio comms open if anything happens. Just alert. I turn and Probably start not. heading down to the right. So I head to the left. I'll head down the right. All right. <clears throat> So, we'll start with Eros and Elias. So, as you guys continue to make your way right, the hallway just continues down for a long stretch. Like, you guys remember how the the structure is on Mars in Destiny 2? Like, there's just long, long, long corridors, corridors going yeah. to the, to the high... Yeah, so it's a lot like that. Like, just these long, long corridors, and there's, there's no lights on. But... As you guys continue to go down the hallway, you do come up to these doors, and, and the doors just open wide up for you. For a place with no power, things seem to open up around here. Yeah. No. I get the feeling we're being led here. This is paradoxes. I get the feeling we're being led here. Hmm. Thank you, uh, <laughs> I'll send you one later. <laughs> uh, uh, can I do a perception check again right now? Can uh, I, yeah, I can, try. yeah, you can make another one. I want to see if I can just... Okay. Hmm. You're still not seeing anything. These hallways are, just... are really nothing like you have personally seen. These are just like straight, clean, like mechanical, you know, hallways. Like you, there's nothing for you to, to really pick just, up on. Yeah, I'm just I'm... looking for a thing out of the ordinary that like mm -hmm. marks or something. Apparently I'm seeing a little tiny bit more than what he does. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I'm blind. <laughs> um, yeah, from where you're at... The hallways are, are quite clean. Like you're not noticing any scratches or even any note, like any, like signs of combat in these hallways. Hey Elias, have you been here before? Nope. Mm. Not many guardians have been in these bunkers before. So the fact that we're being let in means that Rasputin wants something from us. Is it Rasputin though? Could be. Probably not. Lights out? Uh, I mean, he's not exactly happy with Guardians after the Iron Lords, so... I don't know. Well, that's the Iron Lords. There's a difference. True. But then but... tell again, that's a crazy Russian AI that probably does not like many people. Yeah, we haven't had the best relations with Rasputin as of late. Hmm. Let's keep going, then. Carefully. <laughs> okay. So, um, while you guys continue down the hallway, I switched to Megu Me POV. Yeah, Megu. Yeah. So, you're continu So, Theo is continuing down his corridor here. It's, it's very similar to the description for the other guys here. Uh, did you want to make an, a perception check of your own going down your corridor? Sure. Can't be okay. too careful. Ain't she she. Okay. I think roll 20's shit is broken today. It's, it's, <laughs> the rolls don't seem to be going very well at the moment. Oh my god. But at least we're getting the bad rolls out now. Yeah. No, no. That <laughs> that you literally just jinxed us. Fucking knock on wood. 
uh, for me that uh, works as i look back up here uh they could all be a lot better so, yeah mm -hmm. i know but here's just, the thing we're just it's building it up for the new guy yeah we're just building it up for the new guy <laughs> all right so as theo is <laughs> continuing down your corridor you do come to a set of doors here but these doors don't open up for you well if the doors open for themselves make them okay um so do a let's see do a strength roll for me to to rip those doors open Really now. <laughs> that is a nat one. Ping. You can't seem to get a grip on on the doors. Like you're trying to get your fingers in between the the crevices to try and pry it open, and you just cannot get your fingers inside there to pull it open. That's a really nice seal. <laughs> that is, it's very sealed tight. <laughs> No, it just kind of looks at you. Goes, are right, you're gonna do what I think you're gonna do? Half tempted. I mean, it might alert like everything in the structure, because we don't know how where this ba the door is based, and this could shake the foundation. Let's quickly look around and see if there's some sort of like, key pad or something. Maybe we can find a way there. Yeah, Nova kind of looks around and goes, uh, yep, I can access the power here. Give me a second. And you see him kind of work his, his laser into the panel. That's out of the room. Shut up. I'm just, I'm just twiddling with my hammer. Just, just and you, you, you're, just, you're, you're watching him like just kind of swing around different angles and he's shooting his eye laser into it and the doors just open up for you it goes there we go oh boy let's do this let's do this all right so you do uh, continue down the hallway and as you do you actually do a approach into a larger room um you do have dark vision, I, I remember, is it, I believe, right? Because you're EXO. Yep. Okay, yeah. So you can see in here. This is it's a. The room is just pitch black, but it, you see, looks like kind of some server farms. There's there's a couple of towers sitting in the structure, and up ahead there is a computer console, and there's actually a number of consoles across this this wall at the far back end of the room. Some more across a computer lab. Uh, no, it chimes in. Oh, possibly. Uh, this looks like it was some kind of an information center. Well, let's see if it has any info in store for us. All right. So while well, you guys uh, enter the room, um, make another perception check for me. Fumble. I mean, close enough. Okay. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll just say this. Uh, you won't even really need to roll for, for this. Uh, you do happen to see that there is some um, dismembered body parts on the ground that are fallen. You immediately recognize the blood to be that kind of a bluish purple. Can I go ahead and touch uh, the uh, blood puddle? Um, yeah, so you, you do kind of step in it. This is kind of in between some of the towers there. Like you just, you find this kind of body part and you look, you look down, you kind of touch it. You check its consistency. It's, it's still fairly wet. It's maybe you, you'd guess about four to six hours old. Oh, it's relatively fresh. And to, Nova shines here. his light like to the back corner of the room, and you see <laughs> a barking <laughs> dog. <laughs> you see, you see dog. Um, dog. So, 
<laughs> in the back <laughs> in the back of the room you do see fallen corpses and they're kind of mashed together in this little mound they're it's like they were just like smashed and compressed into this kind of just body of this mound of corpses you've never seen anything like this before Um, Nova just goes, oh, Traveler, what happened to them? Whatever did this to them, it's probably still inside. Going and Nova young, radios huh? to you guys. Uh, we found something. Fallen bodies, but they're kind of in a mold? I just looked at Elias. <laughs> they're like smashed together, like crushed in some kind of Perverse tower? Get the fuck out of there. We need to get to him now. <clears throat> Don't you tell me, because whatever did it to him, it's still here. I just start. Back to you. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, so we're going to roll with, with, with the books, with the, the borkers back here. <laughs> We're yeah, gonna, uh, going going too. casually barking in the background. <laughs> I, I can't wow. do much about that. No, I know that's okay. It's, it's I, that, funny. No, no, it's, it's fine. It Don't even worry. About it. Trust me. I I have background noise. I have to worry about too. Don't Same. even sweat it. It's just funny as hell. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, oh my God. um, Your boss, Mr. Borkers. <laughs> so after hearing this radio signal, uh, the guy, um, you guys turn around and the doors immediately shut behind you. Uh, we're cut off from you. <sighs> I don't like this, Elias. The door that you're going to lead down in front of you opens up and lights begin to turn on. Yeah, no, fuck that. I don't care who you are. There's no response. There's just silence in, in the room. I, I didn't expect a response. Um, so the lights are coming on right now? The lights in, in the next room have turned on. Uh, I want to roll... hear like the sounds of stuff like powering up. Like I want to go try and go stealth again. Can I roll for that? You're not able to stealth really. I know, yeah. but... I kind of want to peek in without like poking my head in. <laughs> Actually, screw it. I'm just going to poke my head in, look a little bit real quick, like, hello. <laughs> Except for I'm saying in a Russian, привет. <laughs> okay. I, I hate that actually. I chose the Russian. <laughs> I'm just looking in. <laughs> I just thought that's all I want to do. Were you going to roll for that? I can. What do you want me to roll now? Stealth. Oh, you want me stealth. to roll stealth? Okay. Yeah, you're, you're... That's what you asked to do. Oh, yes. Okay. I'll take it. I was so worried about rolling it. I mean, if he's going to stealth, I might as well, too. <laughs> hey, we can at least be wall to wall. At least we're in a hall okay. still. So. Okay. Yeah. You guys both um, <laughs> just kind of guns at the ready. You just kind of peek the corner. You're both peeking each corner. There's no one there. The room, it the room is from what you can see appears to be empty. Yeah, I'd rather not go in there. I take a step in. <laughs> <laughs> Diving Bell doesn't hesitate. He's just he's right by your side. Just okay. I figure you're gonna stay back there for the moment. If anything. I'm just bait at this point if something does come out. Uh, um, I look around the room to see what's going on in there. So as if you walk into anything. the room, you're, you're continuing to hear stuff power on, and the, the console that's on in the back of the room begins to, to light up. The buttons seem to be powering up like it's turning on. Ooh, the monitors nice. begin to flicker, and, and they're, they're, show, they're just... You know, there's data reading across the screens here, just ones and zeros, and 
various different code is just going across the screen as it appears to be booting up. Hey, DB, you know what that thing's doing? Um, not exactly. This, I don't know if this is Rasputin, but let me, and he starts to kind of float over, let me examine the console here and let's, let's see. Alright, and let me switch here. The very episode of that oh boy. Oh. Up. <laughs> Even the ghosts are having a bad time. Yeah. yeah. Maybe we should delay a week. No. <laughs> God, no. We're not. Shut your mouth. <laughs> I'm going to turn my camera on and start rolling dice. (laughs) So, Diving Bell starts to scan the console there, and he's he's continuing to look at it and goes, No, this isn't Rasputin. The majority of his power seems to be diverted to Site 6. Whatever whatever that is. Um, Oh, okay. (laughs) uh, I... uh, I'm just reading what it says. Uh, um, you wouldn't be able to get a map from that, would you? <laughs> um, not from here. Okay, I figured it does. Um, and he he's looking everything over, and it's everything is is booting up. Elias, what are you doing right now? I'm just watching his fucking back and keeping an eye on the tunnel behind me. Okay. So, DB continues to try to examine the console and goes, okay, I think this is operation control for the facility, but... Oh, yeah, a lot of power has been diverted, and yeah, that's obvious. Um, That's why the lights aren't on, but emergency lights aren't on either, because the emergency battery's been drained. Drained? There's there's auxiliary power for the doors, which explains why they're still operational. And that's what keeps the facility still functioning, even when there's low power. Okay, well, let me see if... Um, and he kind of looks over to you, Elias, and goes, uh, Paradox, um, can you help me out here? I We need to get a satellite control. And Paradox will kind of bump out of your backpack and goes, Yeah, yeah, I'll, okay. I'll enter the room with my back towards the room like just slowly entering so like you're you're kind of like facing the door yeah okay like aiming back toward the tunnel where we just came okay all right um now while that's going on uh megu we'll come back to theo here uh so as you're seeing the corpse there do you immediately start to to run out to try and intercept the group? That would probably be the wiser, because if they got locked, if they got locked out, then I should probably I should definitely try and help them. Okay. Yep. Yeah, so you you managed to get the doors open from that room, so those doors are still open. Um, as you take off down the hallway, there you do notice that the other doors um, behind them. Uh, going down their corridor, they have all sealed up as well. So right now, you have about two doors to open up between uh, you and getting into that other room. Uh, now, you can do this one of two ways. You can do it the, the quick way or the the crafty way, which would be doing what you did earlier with the ghost. That one may take a little more time. Uh, you can attempt a stealth, or not stealth, but strength check your way through and just smash the doors and try and get through. Uh, but it may take you some time. So, how would I mean, you like I, to proceed? I mean, question to the others. They know we're here, correct? 
why. Most likely. Someone knows you're uh, here. We're not under attack, so there we're right now just trying to find information so far. So I can either try and brute force it or stealth. Nova looks over at you. Says, well, they're not in immediate danger. We can try and finesse our way through if you want to take our time. But if you think it's dangerous, we need we can hurry in there as quick as we can. Let's uh, let's take our time with at least this one. If they're in immediate danger, the next one, I'm just gonna bust through. On it, and he moves right back over to the panel, and, and he starts to work his way on there. So, and I'll be looking at. Right Let's um, see if he makes it through quick. I'll keep my own eyes on the hallways in case anything comes across. Okay. All right, so he'll begin opening the lock here for you. Uh, so we'll quick transition back to Eros and Elias. Uh, so Paradox begins to navigate over the console and he begins scanning uh you, you two are just guns are at the ready kind of just looking around looking for any kind of movement or anything that appears to pop up is there any other doors in that room exiting that aren't closed behind no there's only one door in and there's only oh, one way in one way out and that's okay. through those doors okay the, yeah, there's no windows in this room here either. Like yeah. you're deep inside, like the mountain on, in this side, in this facility. Okay. So while this is going on, uh, paradox chimes in. Hmm. Okay, I've rerouted some auxiliary power so I can try and gain access to satellite control. Um. Oh man, this uh, this is in bad shape. Oh. Okay. Wait. What? What is it? The satellites, they've been moved. From where to where? Give me a second. I'm I'm trying to figure that out. And you you're seeing him bounce a little faster back and forth and scanning a little more frequently. Those. No 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 no. There's there was a. Someone requested the satellites to be redirected. To where? Uh, um. War sats were redirected, weather sats were redirected. That to the North Pole? Hmm. There's a series of war sats that fell somewhere above the Arctic Circle. I but that, 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 and he's he's starting to get con confused. He's like, "Wait, this doesn't make sense. That why would anyone want war sats to fall in the Arctic Circle? Unless some the technology there. in it. Wait, you do you think that's what he's after?" Well, it's one thing. It's golden age technology. So while while he's scanning, there's images that are popping up on the computers in front of him. And did you guys want to perception see if you can look at them? Uh, yeah, might as well. Uh, I can look. I can see pretty pictures. Okay, actually, you know, I was gonna. Okay. Uh, where's mine? Uh, there it is. Okay. 
You, you guys, uh, you catch the correct monitor then. So as you're looking at this, you're you're seeing like a picture of the entire globe, you know, just like the, the flat out image. And you're seeing like kind of like the, the trails, like, you know, how satellites like move across the world and everything. But you're seeing how a number of them were redirected to to kind of fall like they're, they're basically pushed up north and we're told to fall over the Arctic Circle. There were some weather satellites too, but they were they were pushed off into an orbit that would make them useless. Well, it's not useless to somebody. Hmm. Okay, and actually, Elias, with that perception. As you're looking at the monitor, you hear a click behind you, and you feel something pressed to the back of your head. He goes, you're absolutely right. Hmm. Oh, hello. And Uros, you are looking at one of the Corsairs, who's got a, a hand cannon pressed to the back of Elias's head. Uh, hello? Are you idiot? <laughs> hmm. You must be Uros Shale. Da? And you may be... Hmm. I am Lucidia. She kind of turns her attention back to you, Elias, and goes, And you are God Hand's favorite little project. Hmm, project sounds interesting. It'd be great mm -hmm. if you told me more about it. <laughs> he doesn't talk to me much. Well, he likes to talk to you, just not the way you think. Oh, yeah, I know. It's kind of rude. I don't know. Telling me, yes. my face still feels well, like... he tells you everything that you need to know when the time is right. Uh, sounds like he's more afraid about me knowing than anything. Hmm. So, do you, like, work for him or something? Her eyes just kind of slowly look over to you and just coldly stare at you. I'm oh. the fourth disciple of speed. At that, I'm going to shove back or like slam my head back into the back of her hand cannon while she's not looked at me. Okay, um. <laughs> oh, she has no chance to fucking change it because the muzzle's right against the back of my head. So as I'm slamming it, her wrist is about to fucking break. <laughs> Okay. Um, I won't even make you roll for that. So as you you knock her back, you turn to face her. Oh, I'm not knocking her back. I'm just hitting her hand. Yeah, you're you're hitting. But are you turning to face her? No, not yet. I'm actually gonna move forward. Okay. I've already got my gun pointed up. I'm like, nope. <laughs> so, I, I guess, like, well, you're going to run forward. I, well, I'm, finish your action, I guess, for me. So, like, what are you going to do? Um, As I move forward, I'm going to turn around and fucking chaos reach her. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah, you don't put a gun to the back of my head and get away with it. <laughs> So, how many steps do you take before you turn? Um, about 15. You get to about your eighth step, and you feel a tiny blade hit the back, hit you right in the back. And... 
Make a constitution save for me. 19. Okay. Your muscles feel incredibly tightened up. Like, every, like all your joints and everything have become incredibly stiff. You're still able to move, but your motion just became halved. Hmm. And well, then I'm gonna as, you, as you turn, as you turn to throw your Chaos Reach, you see a second figure. And that's not... So he attempts to throw another knife, but that won't... That will end up missing. You're throwing your Chaos Reach? Yep. All right, uh, roll the attack. That's a nat 20. Ooh, boy! Dang! Oh, sweet. So You were sweet. angry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you hit him. First gun to back that's, the head, and then you hit it with that. That's great double damage, too, so... <laughs> it is. It is. And so... Question. How far is that second figure, though? It's... It just got in front of Lucivia. Yeah. Oh. Uh, so that's hitting both of them, because that's yep. also a sweeping arc. Yeah, that is, uh, that's gonna be that's 59 damage. Yep, so no, that's more than 59. No, it's 50, it's 59 because it doesn't count the modifier. Oh, oh. <laughs> still, that is a lot. It's it's yeah, still a lot. And let's see if oh. Homeboy Shield is gonna survive that because that's a that's a lot of damage. <laughs> No, maybe it's not the right person to piss off a warlock. <laughs> okay, so you turn, you you throw your chaos reach. You're angry. You just you throw it out. <clears throat> it engulfs the two figures. They do. The beam comes down. <clears throat> And the figure in front, he's he's kind of holding up his arms in a block, but it, the arm, his armor on his arms is singed and burning and crackling with your residual arc. It looks like it might even be like heated up, like it's it's extremely hot and pretty bad. It looks like he took a good amount of damage. Lucivia okay. behind him is is also holding up her hands in kind of a block motion, and her palms are singed in a lot, much the same way that the figure in front of him, his armor is. Just burnt, <clears throat> cracked, red, and sparking residual. <clears throat> but she looks like she did a lot better than the other guy. <clears throat> Yeah. And now we're going to roll for initiative. We are... 21. Okay. <laughs> now, before we actually begin combat, Megu, yep. you're overhearing this. You've made it through the first door. Do you want to brute force the second door, or do you want to try and finesse it? You've overheard the conversation because the, the comms have been open, so you did hear what's happening. I'm like, broadcast. <laughs> if I brute force, I can get to him sooner. If I stealth it, I can have the advantage on attacking. Yeah, but if, if you fail in the brute force, it may take you another extra turn to get in. <laughs> I mean, my job is to protect. And protect I will. Some brute force. Alright. May the roll be with you. May the roll be with me. May God be on your side. Which roll strength? Yep, roll strength. Twenty one. You burst through that door like it's nothing. <clears throat> You you know it's time to, to 
help out and be the defender so you rush in and you hit it go ahead and roll initiative for me as well that was a time I can see clearly now that someone's gonna die. <laughs> okay. Elias, you're up first. Um, so you've already thrown your Chaos Reach. Um, Which what is would you like? Action. Yep. Uh, so what would you like to do for... Uh... Uh, they're both right in the same square, too, and they're still recovering from that uh, Chaos Yep, they're, they're, they're in a five-foot radius, or five-foot area of each other. I'm sorry. That's 20. <laughs> Okay, and I gotta roll. Uh, DC 14. <gasps> nope. Nope. Okay, they're both taking the full brunt. Okay. Uh, so here's the thing. Don't I get three attacks? Uh, it's, you, two? it's two. You get double attack. Mm -hmm. Uh, or well, yeah, you have two arc charges, so yeah. Technically, I have four. Yeah, so yeah, you can actually do this twice, so, okay. Uh, your second one, though, um, that's not gonna hit. Yeah, I didn't think it would. Okay. Um, so, but yeah, they, they take, or, let's see, no, um, the Thunderstruck doesn't have a chain effect for you yet. That's actually I think, something. Uh, that... I think I have to go for the skill. Yeah, because I I know it, it. You can chain it, but that comes later. So this I believe would only hit one target. Yeah. Okay. So you're gonna aim for I'm assuming the target in front then. Yeah, I'm basically just hitting all of them at the same time. Okay. <clears throat> all right. So uh, that they'll, they'll take the thirteen of that first strike. All right, uh, next is going to be Lucivia. Actually, hold on. I didn't finish my movement. Um, oh, yeah. I mean, you still have movement if you do want to, I guess, move. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to try to get into the nearest set of cover. It's a pretty wide open room. There really isn't any kind of set of cover in here. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you can, I guess, kind of move to a back corner if you want to, but there's not, like, there's no, like, cover inside this room. Okay. Uh, the only other thing I need to do before the end is that. Okay. There's a recharge. Yep, yep. Uh, should I also do it for my grenades, too, since it's the end of the turn? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, you can roll for... Because you have four, but you can roll to, to regain one more. Yeah. Three. Okay. Yep, so... You're, you're working on it. It's not, not rebuilt yet. All right. Um, Lucivia... Um, we'll yell out to you. You're so impulsive. And... Let's see, that's a 15... Mm. 15 does not hit you, right? Uh, I think my armor class is 16. Yes, yeah, 16. 16. Okay, so yeah, that will miss. By the way, did my shield points go up by any? When you upgraded me? 
Yep, I, I double checked your your shield points, and that's like where you're sitting at currently should be your maximum. Thirty three and fourteen. Yep. Okay. Just wanted to double check that. Yep. Yep. No worries. Uh, so she's gonna make us her second attack. Uh, okay, that's a seventeen. That I know will hit then. Make another constitution save. Six. Yeah, that's not gonna do well. Yeah. Wait, wouldn't they kind of be, like, stunned a little bit from the everything that just happened to them? They would have if they were not defending. I know they they took they took the the brunt of the damage, but as far as the stun effect, that uh, that didn't pass through. Okay, hmm. now with a chaos reach. It was. Well, don't they get a stun effect if they survive being chaos reached? I mean, if you survive it, that's a plus in general. Um. Uh, yeah, I'm, I don't think there is any kind of stun effect from it. I could be wrong, but I, I don't think there was. I have no idea, honestly. I thought there would be. Of some type. Um, we'll just say no, and we'll double check for uh, for later. But I'm pr I'm fairly positive it's not. But if if it is, we'll I'll I'll write it in there somewhere to get it corrected. But okay. Um. Okay, so going back to the dagger you just took, um, that is, let's see, because you failed the con save. Okay, I'm trying to remember, for paralysis effect, it only lasts for, is it... Is it until they they break out of a the con save or I'm trying to remember. How many seconds is the paralysis? It would be well, it'd be at one minute. That's ten rounds, my guy. Um... Right, but is but as far as you like breaking out of it, isn't there's a roll that you have to make to get out of it though, right? And that's that's a con saving throw. Yeah, it's a saving throw. Yeah. So okay. So. You are in paralysis until you can roll a 15 for con save. And this is how we die. Wait, actually, uh, beforehand. Mm -hmm. Uh, in how how far away are they? From you, um, yeah. they're gonna be about about 40 feet away. Fuck, I could have uh, helped. Uh, no, also remember there's another door between him and them. Because the hallway closed behind us, remember? Yeah, that was the... Because he, he, he got through the first door through the finesse, and he, he powered through the second door to get through to the room. Mm. And because he, mm. he, he passed the strength save, that's how he broke through. Otherwise, that... he would he would have came in on the next round through finesse, and that would have got him through. Okay. And... Uh, and I'm not talking about me to the enemy. I'm me to blue. Which is all oh, from you to blue. Um, that's gonna be about thirty feet. Still not in range. Damn. Need to be at least fifteen. You but. can move in to to close the gap. You have your movement. I mean, when now, it's your turn, I, anyway. It has to be during his turn. That's the thing. Oh, okay. I I I understand now. Okay. And damn it, the music needs to be on replay. I could have helped a bit. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. All right. Um... Don't worry, I'm just dying. <laughs> <laughs> so that is gonna end Lascivious' turn. The third figure it is now his turn, who has not named himself yet. Seeing that he, that Lucivia has paralyzed 
Elias, he turns his attention to Uros. Oh, yay. <laughs> he attempts to throw a knife at you. Oh. A 19 is going to hit you. Yeah, it will. Okay, make a con save. Oh, what? Uh, where is it? Uh, wait. Change the text size of everything. I can't see it. Okay. That's better. Not 20. Good shit. So. Catch it in the air. Ha! Mine. <laughs> okay, so then you're only going to take. Three points of piercing damage. And you are not affected at all. Are you not the dentist? Sorry, it's a mixer behind me. Somebody's doing. Okay. Sorry. Uh, it's it's okay. Uh, so you are not affected by the paralysis poison on the blade. Okay, that's good. Uh, so it makes its second attack. It, he's gonna lunge at you. Uh, that's a seven. Uh, so he lunges at you with a dagger and he is gonna miss. Man, Elias, you messed him up pretty good. <clears throat> Now that's the third guy I didn't hit. Oh, you didn't hit him? Well, you and, must have scratched him. And this figure, for its bonus action, he, you see his face, and he, he kind of smiles a little bit at you. Make a perception check for me. Who? A lot. Er, Earl, excuse me. 11, okay. You do. Um... What you can see, you notice how the Awoken, you've, you've been around other Awoken now, you know how they look. Everyone looks incredibly young, looks very fresh, very, you know, tight and skinned. You notice, looking at this one, he looks like 10 years older than other Awoken. He looks noticeably older, and you can see on his neck these kind of darkish blue kind of marks like kind of reaching up it up its neck and going kind of to his chin a little bit you know how like electrical burn like if someone's struck by lightning they have like these electrical burns that kind of go across their body kind of like mm -hmm. like yeah you're it's kind of in that kind of look on the bottom of of his neck as you're you seeing it and he, he just he's smiling and goes wow i guess you're as good as he says he is then or you just suck. <laughs> he he read, he just kind of holds a knife at you and, and kind of just looks at you kind of waiting. And that's going to end his turn. Theo, it is now your turn. Yep. You've seen Elias just become paralyzed and Uros is in serious trouble. Close the distance. Betw so. For who? Who are you going to go towards? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go towards uh, Elias because since they're paralyzed, they're going to be the most vulnerable currently. Okay, so <laughs> I'll get to you once to I heal Elias. Him. Yeah, you'll move to Elias, and then what would you like to do? Uh, let me quickly check what this was. Okay. I'm... Uh, well, actually, I got, got nothing else besides... Uh, considering I'm not in melee range i'll just use my uh i'll shoot with my auto rifle currently 
Okay, so are you aiming for Elias's foe or Eros's foe? Who are you going to aim at? <clears throat> Elias's. Okay, so you're going to aim at Lucivia. Uh, roll your attack. That'll hit. And auto fire. 21. And that also hits. Okay, so you got... That will eight. be 7 damage in total. Oh, no, 8. Yeah, yeah, eight. yeah that's 8 but... damage. And then I have an extra attack, so... Attack yep. again. 17. Uh, that hits. And not 20. And that, and then, yeah. Okay, and then, so you got 9 on that, so... Eight, nine, 17 damage. Okay. And no use in using my uh, bonus action for anything, because I'm going to need it. All right. Uh, so that'll end your turn? Yep. All right. Uros, you're up, buddy. Yeah. You you got this mysterious figure with a dagger in, in front of you, and he's he's... He's waiting for you. He's just in front of me. Where are the other two at? Uh, so Elias is about about 20, 30 feet away from you. Uh, he's... The, the guy in front of you is basically between you and Elias. And where are the other two uh, baddies? They're they're kind of further back to the left, about forty some feet away. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Shoot his ass. He's right in front of me. That's all I'm gonna do is shoot him. Because I'm assuming. What are you shoot him with? That. <laughs> okay. That'll still hit, even though, like, you're kind of at a disadvantage for the range, but, yeah, you'll still hit with that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right here. Bam! Screw you. Okay. <laughs> um, so, all right, so that'll be six. Oh, do I attack twice now? You do. You got a second okay. attack. I couldn't remember. Um, I'll shoot him again. Hell. I can just do that. <laughs> there you go. I don't know if that'll hit him, though. Uh, that one's gonna go wide. Yeah, I figured. Okay, um, you also have a bonus action. Oh, shoot, yeah. Uh, I'll use my throwing knife. Boop. Alright. There we go. God, I forgot about that. Okay. And then 13 on top. Okay. Nice. <coughs> Where's my sticky one? I'll have to redo another one. All right, so you take your first shot. The shot connects, and the figure kind of jolts his shoulder back a little bit at the hit. Your second shot just kind of misses a little bit. And seeing that miss, you reach in, grab your throwing knife, and you throw it at him. And it connects for more burning damage <clears throat> it hits him in the other shoulder and he, he kind of gets knocked back a little bit <clears throat> but he, his head kind of comes back down and he, he just he's in pain and he's even more angry oh so angry alright so Elias, making a con save for me. I, I like to cast Protective Light as well. I think he's doing that. Okay. So, plus three to your save. <laughs> I can't do anything you, you, yet. You got inspiration. Hey. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's kind of like Bardic Inspiration, but not quite. <laughs> Oh, see, I, mean, I, I help with saving throws. <laughs> so yeah. that's good, at least. <laughs> yep, so yeah, go ahead and make that con save. Uh, uh, con save. Uh, 
so that'll be eight. Uh, that bring it to a ten. ten. Still not enough. Fuck. All right, but I mean, under protective light though, um, doesn't he gain like protection against like piercing? Sadly, no. It just it's just that it helps with saving throws. Okay, so it's just inspiration. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. All right. Doing, uh, doing uh, being that a negative is it has to be within fifteen feet, and I must be conscious. That's gotcha. pretty much it. Okay. Okay. Mom said she didn't love me. <laughs> All right, so that's going to um. unfortunately end your turn there. So it is Lucivia's turn next. And she is going to attack you, Theo. Uh, see, that's an 18. Oh, that hits. Finally, a worthy opponent. <laughs> oh, you're coming at me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so she's gonna slash you for three damage. All right. And her second attack uh, is gonna miss. Uh, that's a ten. Yeah. That's All right. So. <clears throat> She kind of like slashes up at you just to kind of like put, kind of like show that she's dangerous and put some distance in between the two of you, missing her second shot. <clears throat> she she readjusts the knife into her hand and moves into a defensive position. <clears throat> it's been a while since someone's actually been able to hurt me. <laughs> she cracks a smile at, at that comment and goes. Oh, I can't do more than hurt you, little one. <laughs> I'm getting bad vibes. <laughs> Elias is just sitting there. <laughs> just, just very bad vibes. <laughs> All right. Our third character is up. <clears throat> Uh, he's gonna attack you right away, Uros. Uh, that's a 19. No. Um, let's see. Uh, that's gonna be four piercing damage. He, he comes at you with a dagger and he gets you right in your shoulder. Oh. Oh. He kind of pushes you back a little bit, and he says to you in a quiet voice, I haven't introduced myself yet. My name is Becerus. I'm the fifth disciple of the speed. And he attacks you again. From the ground, uh, I just go, you're all cultists. <laughs> uh, that's a 17. By the way, that's gonna down... My shit's still recharging, by the way, right? Um, yes, technically it would be. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and roll for that while you do what you do. Yep, go ahead. Oh, apparently it only added one to my last one, so. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, it sort of fits, because you're, you're kind of in a paralysis state, so you're not really gonna recharge fast either, I guess. <clears throat> so, uh, that 17, that's gonna hit you, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. And pff, that's two. Uh, so he hits. He stabs you with another two points of damage. Ugh. Mama. And that's gonna end its turn. Theo. Mr. Robot Man? Yep. What you gonna do? She's a, she's earned a bit of my respect, and which for that, I'll, I'll return kindly. Warhammer time. <laughs> okay. Yeehaw! Swing, swing that Warhammer. Let's see what you got. Not gonna hit. Oh well. 
Oh, I mean, that's your first swing. Did you want to take a second? Yes, I will. 14. Okay. Um, so you go to... <clears throat> you pull out your Warhammer, <clears throat> and you go for a swing. She immediately jumps over it and dodges your first swing. You come back around for your second swing. She lands on her feet and immediately ducks down underneath your second swing. <sighs> Goes right over her head. Hmm. And she comes back up with a knife ready in hand. <clears throat> and she goes. And her response is, you can do better than that. Did you have a bonus action or anything? I, I I'm forgetting. Uh, the only bonus action I can really do is is barricade, but that's okay. not gonna be quite beneficial. Gotcha. Okay. And so that'll end your turn. Uh, well, actually, I have movement. Yeah, Could you I still get have closer? Your movement. Can I get closer to uh, Elias and place a barrier next to him so that way he's a bit more protected? Yeah, I mean, you can drop back and place your, like, a, a barrier in front of him. Yeah, that way, if anything, he'll be protected a bit more from any stray mm -hmm. attacks. Yep. So, I'll do that, place on my barrier okay. next to him. Alright, so yeah, you, you drop back uh, the 10 feet to, to get near Elias, and then you, you drop down your barrier. And then, did you want to stay behind it, or do you want to move back forward in front of it? Move back forward. Okay. You're gonna play the vanguard all right so that finishes up your turn then uros you are now up play brush <laughs> <Fuck this. laughs> uh, please tell me it hits him i don't think it will well at this range it's mm, it's you, you're choosing all three so but because it, it's still going to hit, but because of the roll, yeah, it's only going to be half damage. I'll take it. <laughs> okay. So, you you, you kind of use your blade brush to kind of push him back. You unleash it in front of him and just throw all your knives at him. And then that's going to do... Mm -hmm. See, that'll be... I'd be around this would be nine be nine solar damage. Um, and then you do still have one more attack. Uh let's uh, hit him with Graviton Lance. At least I can do something, maybe. Oh, I don't know, maybe, maybe not. Um uh, not with that shot. Mm -hmm. That one's actually I'm gonna miss. No. Alright, but you you kinda push the he push Becerus off you, and he kind of slides back a little ways from your blade barrage, taking that damage, and that was actually... Add that in there. <clears throat> Alright. So... This happens. You damage him. Um... No, go ahead and roll your recharges for me, too, because you need to recharge your super and your melee. All right. Uh, uh, hey, Megger, check your DMs real fast. This is... D20. So, two, okay. eight. Okay. There. Okay. Uh, so that track. now brings us back to Elias. Uh, go ahead and make a con save for me. Seventeen. All right. <clears throat> you finally feel your muscles relax, and you finally feel like you, you're able to get past it, and you break free out of this paralysis that you're in. You're finally up and ready for the fight. How far are they from me? Lucivia is about 15 feet in front of you. 
she's not paying attention to me, correct? She is. She's looking at both of you because your Megu is basically in front of you. I mean, so I guess her attention might be on Megu because you're behind Megu and you're much smaller than Megu. <laughs> um. I'm gonna try to use my jump and push myself back away from her since I'm on the ground. I like, just immediately move myself back. Okay. I um, mean, so that'll just take your movement then. Mm hmm. Uh, so you just wanna move back like 10, 20 feet? Yeah. Okay. Uh, how far is Megu from her? Megu is about 10 feet. Because he's in front of you, because you're you're 15 feet, Megu's at 10, and then she's she's at the distance that she's at 10 feet away. I'm going to hold an action until it's Megu's turn. Uh, and I'm just going to use the radio to contact him directly <laughs> when it's his turn. Okay. I know what he. I know what he's gonna say. So he's gotta wait. Yep. All right. So. Oh, and before. Uh, are you only gonna use your movement, or? Mm-hmm. No, I'm not using my movement and readying my action. Okay. Oh, yep. Yeah, so yeah, roll your your recharges. Uh, and then for my grenade. Yeah, I got my grenade back. Oh, yeah, you, well, you had, I think, two more arc charges still available, because yeah. you had four. So. I got an arc charge back, basically. Yep, yep. But right. I'm at six for my super. Yep. I just fucking noticed I did two, one, and three. Yeah. For super recharge. Yeah. D20 is... I mean, you, you rolled a D12, so, I mean, it's not like it's all bad, I guess, but... Well, no, for the super... Like yeah, yeah, point. I, yeah, yeah. That's unfortunately been not working for you. All right, so that'll end your turn. Um, so that brings us to Lucivia. She does. Let's see here. Actually, let's see if she does notice it. Yep. Okay, she will. All right. Yep. She does kind of catch out of the corner of her eye. Elias's movement away from Theo. <clears throat> oh, wait. Whoops. Was Theo right next to me? Like, right up against me? He was in front of you. Oh! Yeah, remember, he was he's defending you. So, yeah. you still have your bonus action then, right? No, I use it to protect you. Yeah, with, with uh, protective light. Uh, yeah, it was protective light. And That's even, not the bonus he, action I used. It was barricade. Oh right, right, yeah, barricade. So you did throw up your barricade. Yeah, yeah, did throw up barricade. Okay, then I don't need to use my fucking uh, hold my action at all. Uh, I'm gonna tell the bitch catch. And do what? Does she catch it? Catch what? I. You're just saying catch. What are you doing? I see four fucking charge. Okay. And it's just going straight at her feet. Make a dex throw. Ten, and it doesn't even really need to hit her. It's just aiming for her fucking feet. Yeah, because it, it's going to be AOE, I, I'm, I'm aware, but... Now... Just me so we're completely behind, clear on this... Me and Megu are I, behind the shield. You're no, behind. A, you're behind a barricade, but I we I just need to emphasize that you're you're going to set up a large C four charge in a mountainous facility that could collapse on top of you. And uh, should I also point out one extra feature? I'm not behind the barricade. Well, no, I can just hold it up and go. So, do we all want to die? Okay, so this is kind of this is your play then. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling her. Do we all want to die? Make a persuasion. Uh, 13. And it's going to be with advantage because you're you're basically 
You're you're doing the the whole because uh, he's holding a thermal detonator. <laughs> So, while that while this happens, you two are this is a standoff basically now with the detonator. She's staring at you. You're staring back with you know thumb on the trigger, or whatever. The doors in the room open up. <sighs> and. Walking through the hallway, you see a silhouette of a kind of a small figure. I need everyone to make perceptions for me. All right. Ten. Eleven. <laughs> None of us did well. We're all one away from each other. What the fuck? You guys, you all, all of you uh -huh. rolled within the same they I'm rolled a 10 you. and 11 on their perceptions too <laughs> i'm telling you something but i do the, uh, my dice my dice rolled the same as you guys oh you gotta be kidding <laughs> that's what i'm saying they both rolled an Ow. 11 and 12 on their perceptions you all rolled the same oh, jesus <laughs> christ okay sorry rolls <laughs> okay okay so God said no. And Eros <laughs> nope. you ended up having the highest one here. <laughs> you you see kind of a small figure and you of all people would actually recognize who's coming through here. You recognize the outfit of one doorman who was guarding Malachi's club. You see him kind of walk in, and everyone is looking at him. All of you guys are just, like, everything has just stopped, and everyone is just looking at him. And you just kind of, and to describe him for everyone here, he's kind of a, a shorter man, about 5'10", 5'11", wearing jeans, tennis shoes, t-shirt, very easy, kind of casual wear. Kind of, he's short, kind of blonde hair, a little bit of a, a little bit of a beard. He he kind of just looks around at, at everyone, and you see him visibly just kind of sigh. Just <sighs> can I just say something? All I can picture in my head is the scene of Saving Private Ryan of the American paratroopers versus the Germans in the small little courtyard. <laughs> Just so seeing this, <laughs> Lucivia and Becerus kind of look at each other and look back at at this figure and go, "Who the hell are you?" And you see this figure make a, a few gestures with his hands. You guys immediately immediately can recognize this. This is City Common sign language, and he just he just says. You see him spell out a name, Julius. Hmm. They, Becerus and Lucivia, look back at each other and go, "What the hell was that?" Doesn't matter. We got what we came here for. Lucivia slowly puts her knife away and backs up slowly. Ah, uh, don't you blow the city? Move. Blow the city if you want to. Blow this facility if you want to. We've already done our part here. She just slowly starts backing up. Can I shoot her in the kneecap? I wouldn't advise it. <laughs> I mean, uh, she's needing... So, before... Now, before you can even do that, <clears throat> Julius kind of walks in between the doorway and kind of steps in front of her to stop her. She tilts her head at 
at this Julius. They're standing. They're about eye level from each other. They're they're about equal size. She's looking at him, sizing him up. I've never seen you before. God hand will have interesting time. You. And you see Julius kind of reach into his pocket and he pulls out a pair of sunglasses and he just puts them on and he just he continues to stare at Lucivia. And she goes, Oh, nothing to say? And he he, he just he puts his hands in his pockets and he, and he just kind of casually just stares at her. As she's walking away, I just go, you know he's mute, you bitch. That's what he's doing. She kind of looks back at you and just kind of gives you this snarl look like, whatever. And yeah, at least I'm not the one making fun of disabled people. <laughs> Julius just kind of, he hears that and he he kind of tilts his head a little slightly and just kind of shrugs <laughs> like, Lucivia starts to back away, and Viserys puts his knife away and joins Lucivia, and they approach the door, walking past Julius, and they mutter something to him. You guys actually make one more perception. Let's see if you actually hear what they say to him. Oh, Come on, give me that now. What one. the fuck? Come on, give me that I'm now. Deaf. One. What the fuck is this? Elias. Elias, you hear a whisper. You can't quite hear what it says, but you can actually hear them whisper something. It's a, it's a sentence. Mm -hmm. And they just brush by him and walk by. Julius kind of just shakes his head, looking kind of at the ground, and just kind of starts to walk forward tor towards you guys. And he, he reaches a little into his pocket as he's walking up to you guys, and he pulls out a small device and holds it out in his hand and the device begins to light up and you see a holographic image and or else you're going to recognize who it is right away since you've seen him in person oh, Malachi yeah. and he he's standing in, in a full figure kind of in a holographic form and goes Earl Shale you've been a difficult man to reach Oh, sorry, Malachi. How are you? Hmm. The question is really, how are you? I learned uh... that you were walking into a trap and seemed to be a problem. Uh, yes. A little hmm. bit of one. We should discuss this in person. Uh, if you wouldn't mind standing before my device, please. And he motions for you all to kind of stand up in front of the device. I was hoping to fight with them longer. <laughs> as I'm just going to stand in front. You'll get your chance, Theo. Don't worry. Yeah, Nova goes, yeah, I think we're going to run into them more than once at this point. Agreed, Nova. Mm. Alright, so everyone assumes their position. Beam me up, Scotty. <laughs> you got it so as you guys uh, stand in position you are immediately transmatted and you are transmatted into a new location and one even Earl's you haven't been in this place before you're used to his kind of a, a office in the club where you know it, it smells of incense and it has a very sweet smell to it this this is more of a, a laboratory kind of. It's it smells clean, almost like, almost kind of a bit of like a hospital. It's it's very clean, disinfected, but it's it's in a, it's in a laboratory. Hmm. And Malachi is is standing there and goes, "Welcome, gentlemen." I know, okay. His eyes kind of look around to Theo and Elias and goes, you and I have not had the pleasure of meeting. And he walks up to you, Elias. He extends out his hand. 
My name is Malachi. I'll take it and shake it because respect. Because I don't fully know him. You oh. you don't have to roll for this. Um, as you look at him, you notice something about his right eye. There is no pigment in his right eye. It is just mm. white. It is white with the black iris. Hmm. He goes, we have not had the pleasure of meeting, but I'm aware of your work. Of what, the explosions, or...? <laughs> Among other things. Fair enough. He turns his attention to you, Theo, and extends the same courtesy. My name is Malachi. I'll go ahead and send my hand to shake. Theo. Hmm. The Crucible Champion. You make quite a name for yourself. I try my best. Hmm. You've won me a fair amount of glitter. Glimmer, excuse me. So, <laughs> therefore, I will <laughs> gladly give you a little more courtesy than most. You've won me a fair amount of money. And he kind of pats you on the shoulder as he walks by. But that's not why I brought you here now. And that's not why you're even here in this facility. This... Well, shall I start from the beginning? I learned that you were in a bit of a predicament. The one you seem to be chasing is someone who seems to find interest in things that I, too, find interest in, and, well, he's more than a problem for both you and myself. He, he kind of turns to you as he kind of... He's, he's kind of pacing around the lab as he's talking to you guys. He goes, What exactly do you know about our mysterious god hand? What have you learned? Absolutely fucking nothing, personally. Other than that the Awoken know about him. Paradox kind of chimes in. He says he was from the future, or he says he is the future, for whatever that means, and he seems to have incredible speed that surpasses anything that we can find measurable. Malachi kind of turns and goes, well, you're not wrong about that. It was a good idea to try and access the satellite network to track him, but that was exactly what he was expecting you to do, which is why he laid the trap for you. He knows where you're going, and he knew what your plan was before you even knew. Why? Future knowledge. If we were to believe that he is from the future. His Amalekai's eyes kind of move and goes, well, let's just assume that he is. What he has done so far, if most time theory would be believed, is that when he came back in time, his very actions have changed the future. So the future that he knows could, may or may not come to pass. Such as the quandary with traveling in time, any change that you make could have an adverse effect on your future. And if he's changing the future to benefit himself, well then he must have some form of knowledge about it. So I would say him being from the future is a very likely possibility. He kind of, Malachi pulls out a chair and, and sits down. He goes, I'd like to introduce you to someone who may be of some assistance to you. And at this time, I'd like to bring in our friend Bork. Yep. Bork, you there? Yeah, I'm here, I'm here. All right. So, Malachi will wave you to to kind of step in and he looks to you guys this is my associate ash six she has 
intimate knowledge of your recent findings of what was they called the hive, I believe it was. Uh, She's familiar with your work, and I believe she can be of some valuable assistance to you. And Valakai looks over to you, Ash, and, and goes, Please, introduce yourself. Well, you know my name. I'm going to be completely honest. I do not care much for uh, combat or things like that. I am simply here to learn. I feel like maybe going with you guys, I could gain more knowledge. That is all I'm after. Malachi promised me that I may learn more about the darkness and the nature of. Malachi kind of stands up and, and puts his arm around Ash and goes, I believe her knowledge will be of a value to you. Hmm. And he, he smiles at the group of you and goes, well, I'll let you get your pleasantries out of the way. Um, Uros, may I speak with you privately? Duh. And he waves for you to come over and he pulls you to another corner of the room. What's up, Malachi? He goes, <clears throat> I understand you've taken a trip to the reef to understand wish magic. Duh. Do you believe that God Hand is associated with the Ahamkara in some way? Possibly. Do you have a picture of him? We should have pictures, right? <laughs> yeah, remember. yeah. Your okay. your ghost can produce an image of what you saw the night you guys were attacked. Okay, good. I couldn't remember if we did or not. So, well, I, mean, so yeah. I have footage of you and I being drug across the ground. Okay, let's not bring that yeah, one up. Okay. Yeah, but... <laughs> yeah, he's just asking for a picture, so... So yeah, I have DB... DB produce one up for him real quick. It's like, hey. Malachi looks at the image and studies it for a moment and goes, those are unmistakably Ahamkara bones. Yes. Where do you think he got them? This is the one thing we've been trying to find. Just one of this. He wasn't puzzle. part of the hunt, then, you think? You think he's something else? Uh, I think so, but we need more evidence to prove it. Hmm. I may not know the location for which he's congregating, but I do believe that there is a lead somewhere on the moon. The moon? Hmm. There is an old base on the moon that does have some information that might be of value to us. However, there is a new problem. What is Those very skeleton? hive that you had encountered some time ago. The bony skeleton? <laughs> exactly. It's believed that they reside in the moon. And if so, my suspicions were correct in that something is building a massive army and it is right under our noses. You think they're using what? the hive? I do not know. But I do believe that there is merit in pursuing this lead. I do believe that our mutual foe seeks to gain something from there, but what I don't know. I have a really stupid question real quick. Okay. Did Eros ever turn off his camera? Camera? In his headset. 
have no I don't know, did he? I don't remember. <laughs> If that's the case, me and Theo just heard that entire conversation. Maybe I want you to hear it then. Because <laughs> all I'm going to do is just tell you about it anyway. Because it just popped in my head. I was like, wait a minute. We were all communicating with each other earlier. We could see each other's POVs. Oh, that's right. Uh... Yeah, you guys never turned them time. off. You never had any downtime to turn them off. In yeah. Got <laughs> all about it. So we just heard that entire conversation that was supposed to be in secret. I'm still completely in the dark here. <laughs> yeah, because you're not in the network. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah you, just, like, you, I just realized that too. Um, yeah, so while they're having this conversation, you th Ash is just looking at these two like, what are these guys doing? These guys are idiots. <laughs> these are the people who are supposed to get me more... Like <laughs> these guys, these guys supposedly killed those bony monsters I read about. What is this? <laughs> when he mentions the hive on the moon, I'm just gonna clear my throat over the radio. <laughs> Malachi's eyes kind of dart back and forth, and he. I just he flicks I, your helmet. I just don't mind. I forgot. Go. Yeah, he forgot to turn off his radio. Um, We've been a little busy. He, he, yeah, he he's flicking your helmet, giving you the hint. Yeah, it's like uh, yeah. I for uh, we've been a little busy, and whatever you tell me, most of the time they are gonna know anyway. So, well, I'm Malachi like, uh, gets real close to you and goes, "There's a reason I'm telling." Information to you and only you. Uh, okay. Because while I trust in you and your work, you have done well for me in the past. I hope to continue. I do not know these two, and while you may f freely give them information, I am not exactly willing to part with certain information to people I do not know. I trust. Ash them. Six is an exception because she has worked for me for a long time, and I do trust her vehemently. And I, and I trust, trust you. Them. However, hmm. said trust needs to be earned. And while you've done work for me well in the past, this is a matter of discretion because, once again, your vanguard must not know of what we do here. Well, I don't tell because them everything. Because any, any, listen to me very carefully, any, any information that the vanguard learns of me puts them all in very, very serious danger. I would mm. like to keep it that way. They stay out of my okay. business, I stay out of theirs, and we are all happy. He, he puts his okay. hand on your shoulder. Good. I'm glad we come to this understanding. Now, you will in investigate this on the moon, and you will tell mm -hmm. no one. Okay. So in the meantime, he, we'll he leads you back over to the group and goes, Theo11, I have a question for you. Yes. Malachi walks up to you, and he, he his hands kind of go behind his back. Does the name Rizal Azir mean anything to you? Would I know that name off the top of my head? Make an intelligence check. Bop. Bop, bop. Happening, I'm bringing up the diagrams of the wizard and the knight and just handing them to Ash. Uh, yep, so Ash, you had only gotten your hands on the thrall corpse, so those diagrams that Elias would be giving to you, that is new information you've not seen before on the Hive. Oh, and the Acolyte, too. Okay. Uh, Theo, the name doesn't ring any bells to you. Not off the top of my head? No. Hmm. The man known as Razel Azir was a titan of the Crucible. He was a champion many years ago. 
But he became bored of constantly fighting the Fallen, and he seeked new challenges. Recently, he took a trip to the moon. What he found, though, he will not say, and he will not share, but he came back a different person. I believe there's connection between these creatures that were once discovered and what he found. Seeing as he was a member of the Titan Order, I thought you may have known him, but that's fine. I have a suspicion that he'll come around again. He's disappeared for some time now. There's no mention of him anywhere. Seems he's just fallen off the face of the earth. This, however, can pose a problem. He kind of tilts his head towards you. If he is like these Corsairs that you are pursuing that have been corrupted by whatever has tainted them, he could be a very dangerous adversary. Mm. And based on it sounds, he this god hand seems to have more disciples other than the two you faced. I I propose he's gonna go after some very dangerous characters, and I believe this candidate may be one such person God hand might pursue. I give you this knowledge because you should be keeping an eye out for this one. And because we are we are the same the same alike. I could possibly get through to them. Perhaps. But I believe that he may show up at some capacity, and I find it worrisome. You should be on your guard. What is that? No, no other way. Make a perception check. Please be fucking good. Nice. <laughs> no. Damn. Your your eyes are kind of like you're studying his face. You're not really paying much attention to anything specifically about his face, but you're you're kind of just studying him. But nothing nothing is is popping out to you specifically. He goes my boy, I have a, shall we say, a unique ability of foresight. I'll be quite frank with you. I have seen you two fight. Though the outcome I do not know, I have seen you two clash. And therefore, I believe it's within your interest to be on guard. He kind of turns his attention back to you, Elias, and he kind of sees you conversing with Ash, kind of sharing this information, and goes, you remember our high friends that you encountered some time ago? Yeah, they are kind of creepy. Um, I have a feeling you're the one that uh, he... I'm kind of wave my hand at Uros. Not he went to talk to when I reported to the Vanguard. The very same. He just smiles at you. Eh, I kind of figured. Didn't want to ask, but... Eh. What doesn't happen around in front of me is not my issue. He kind of just puts his hands back to his back again and goes, I'm well aware that you have no problem being discreet. You've been, you've shown that to me already in the past, which I'm quite thankful for. It's kind of also why I kind of pointed out Eros's helmet was online too. 
he just kind of gives you a slow smile and goes, well, I guess I should reward you with some information as well. That's why I'm sharing the information with Ash, which will I'll also give to you. Because since you also seemed interested in that thrall, you might be interested in these three. He he kind of tilts his head and kind of closes his eyes a little bit, just kind of like almost like in in, in like a ooh, like that sounds so good. Hmm. I do love enjoying reading such information, but I will have to shelve this now. We have more important matters to deal with. You in particular have far more important matters to deal with. Mm. Tell me. God Hand seems to be attached to you. If it is from the future, which it all likelihood seems to be at this point, do you believe him to be a former comrade or something more? I feel like with the anger that he exudes, he's somebody that got caught in the crossfire of something. So you believe in revenge? Possibly, but maybe aimed at the wrong person. Maybe he just sees my name as an easiest target to latch onto of his hate. Because hmm. a child may not remember most incidents, but they might remember a face. Hmm. There was something he said to you, though. Something about... Oh, what was it? He, he kind of looks up, upward in thought. That we've been at this a long time. And that he was always one step ahead of you. Hmm. Let's assume something for a moment that if he is really from the future, let's just go ahead and say that he is. Future knowledge, as I said earlier, can be tainted with the fact that you change history when you come back and do something quite recklessly as he has. This poses a unique challenge, is that... With this future knowledge, he could be speeding up events to lead in his favor and slowing certain ones down to work against us. Sure. You know he's building a doomsday device. You know he's targeting certain things and certain people. Do you believe he's going to go after more personal targets? Sooner or later. It's a bound eventuality. Malachi turns to you, Ash, and goes, I'm sorry I haven't briefed you much on their situation, but based on what you've heard so far, what can I answer for you about their god hand problem? I feel I may need more information of my own. I mean, other people's accounts are or can be helpful, but I may need to know more of my... Uh, I mean, you'd have, I suppose, my own experience to come to a conclusion. He, Malachi, turns back uh, to you three and goes, fill Ash in on your experience with God Hand. I just share the video of a lot, or, or us getting dragged across the street by his face, basically. 
Uh, can you guys actually like just out of character? Can we break? Can you guys break me on that real quick? Cause I so I'll I'll, I'll kind of give you the the, the, <laughs> yeah. the, the TLDR. <laughs> so yeah, so God Hand is a speedster that has Ahamkara bones broken across his boots, his gloves, and across the the sides of his helmet. He he's dressed as a warlock and he is radiant with arc energy. He's so far, they've been able to determine that he can move past Mach 2, and he's able to run across water. He's able to move incredibly fast, and he seemingly has the above game, he has the fighting powers of a monk. Can also get things out of containers that without even opening them. Well, that's fun. Yeah. Yeah, so if if you're familiar with speedsters kind of in the DC universe yeah. and what they're uh, what they're capable of, you're going to have a good idea of what God Hand okay. is capable sounds, of. Sounds. So yeah, just kind of like the yeah, no. for brevity's sake, they kind of give you their accounts of their their attack with God Hand and he basically beat the shit out of them. He took a a, a good amount of damage. And he basically phased the bullets out of his body, and he escaped. I feel like a, a being that could survive punishment, like... Or survive any kind of damage that easily. You'll have to bring, you'll have to bring him down in one hit. There's, you can't, like, slowly chip away at him, like... Uh, you can most enemies, or most, like larger foes, you have to uh, immediately bring him down, or else you're just going to get uh, swamped. Basically, yeah. <clears throat> and then a Paradox kind of pops out of um, Elias's backpack and kind of relays the information. So, at best, I'm, I was able to clock him going at about Mach 3, um, when he left the city that we were under attack. Um, as far as any other information, yeah, he was able to phase a computer chip out of the cylinder without it actually breaking or breaking the glass. Um, that's about all we've, I think, all we have. Yeah. And he kind of look, he looks at you, Elias, and goes, "I was was that everything, or did I miss something?" I mean, other than us being dragged across the ground easily. Well, you already showed that off, so. Oh, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry if you hear the snow, the snowmobiles in the back. I'm they're like they're getting loud out there. <laughs> I was gonna say, uh, his regeneration ability. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, um, that was really scary to just see all your shots just get dropped right out of his body like that but what really scared me and Paradox kind of turns back to you ash it goes he took those hits he wasn't phased it's almost as if they didn't hurt him that makes things more more concerning and a lot more interesting i must say and as you, you're saying that, uh, I believe it was Dragonfly was was your yes. ghost name. Yes. Yep. Dragonfly kind of kind of little slips out of your backpack, go and goes. Well, this this all sounds quite fascinating, doesn't it? <laughs> Creepy ghost. <laughs> no, no, no. Not at all. And you just uh, look at um, not the most social ghost, so I'll just. Nah, I think it's actually a cool voice, so <laughs> keep talking. <laughs> I just do like the cane. And... Do it again. Do it again. <laughs> Dragonfly's eyes just kind of move, move nervous. I'm like, um, um, uh, I mean, what do you want me to say? I don't know. <laughs> Um, 
game is gonna be. <laughs> I'm just waiting for you guys to do something. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm a muted laughing this whole time, <laughs> trying not to laugh the whole time. I'm like, oh, forget it. I'm going to be able to. We can't uh, be serious all the time. No, no, not at all. That's and uh, that's fine. I'm, I'm loving it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I love the boys. Keep talking. I have no idea what to just, say. Dragonfly, just like, fuck you, and just <laughs> I was back into his backpack. Better off that way. Peace for now. Oh, man. Oh, no. Oh, my God. As you can see, this is what your teammates are going to be like. <laughs> well, I mean, they can't all be scholars. I don't know what you want from. Wait, is Ash a warlock too? Yeah, Ash is a warlock. <clears throat> I mean, oh, I'm shoot, a scholar blowing <laughs> things up, so. I'm just here. <laughs> yeah, you both have an affinity for chaos. <laughs> Except one, except one more than the other, and I won't say who. <sighs> Jesus. <sighs> well, if if anything, if you ever, since you're not going to be in the front lines, it seems, you can always stand behind me at least. I appreciate that. You have um, my shield. <laughs> you are the shield. He is the shield. <laughs> we'll look at you highly. He is the table. Yeah. <laughs> you will now Here be this. I don't look at you highly, but I will do my job. Wow. That's wow. underhanded insult. Jeez. <laughs> wow. That can of compliment, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Malachi's just kind of sitting off to the side, and he's just he's having a he's just having a laugh, just looking at you two conversing. Uh, yeah. <sighs> either either way, considering I guess we didn't particularly get to do our job to say, but we got something out of it. Malachi steps up. You couldn't have gotten access to the satellites if you wanted to. He had sabotaged that a while ago. But that's fine. You don't need to necessarily know exactly where it is. It's going to be more a matter of when it is. Oh, God damn it, I hate the time puns. Please tell me we don't have to deal with time at all, Luis. Again, I cannot say if you guys are going to be somehow become time travelers, but if your villain can travel through time, you may need to find a way to counteract this. Something to consider. I'm not gonna lie, I just about made all of you hate me for making a pun. Oh, jeez. I about <laughs> <laughs> said, are we gonna be hot tub time machinists? What's a hot tub? Uh... Is it just a bed in the bath with hot water? No. Eli, Eli suddenly has a heart attack. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there you have an opening. Paradox on the quickly team. resurrects you. Go, uh, what? What the fuck? Well, no, I didn't say it in game, so, but no, I always do you understand. Uh, oh, what's that? Your double standard must have died there. Oops. <laughs> Uh, oh, no. All I could think of was like, hmm, this sounds like a really good time to make this shitty uh, ass joke. <laughs> oh, God. But Malachi just, he, he just kind of recovers from his laughter and goes, well, not that this hasn't been amusing and fun and all, but I'm going to give you this. And he hands it over to you, Elias, and he hands you this, uh, this little data pad. Mm -hmm. um, so this is the coordinates on the moon. It is on the dark side of the moon. Uh, there's a hidden facility there that 
is supposedly a housing facility for dark matter. Hmm. He goes, I don't think anyone has been to this facility in, well, a very long time, and that's for a reason, and I think you can see why. Yeah, if more of these creatures are on the moon, then, yeah. But more importantly, and he kind of taps on the figure, do you know what the substance is? And he taps on dark matter. Uh, yeah, it's something that shouldn't fucking exist. It's a massive energy source if it's used properly. Or the world's greatest, or actually the universe's explosive device. Scientists of old, I believe, once said that the universe was primarily composed of dark matter and that it was, if it were possible to collect, it would be the most dangerous and explosive substance in the known universe. Mm hmm That sounds to me like the perfect catalyst for something incredibly destructive, don't you think? Yeah. He he studies your face, and that eye, that his white eye that you, you see, you notice a little bit of a glow to it. Hmm. He continues to kind of study your helmet as he's looking at you and goes... I think you'll find what you're looking for in this lead. And he kind of pushes the pad a little bit towards your chest a little bit. I'll take it. He nods to you solemnly and looks to the others. Well, if there's nothing else here, I have other matters to attend to. And he looks back over to Ash and goes... If you need any assistance, please do contact me. Of course. Of course. He kind of smiles and he looks back to all of you and and he starts to walk out of the room and goes, oh, before... And he, he kind of sets down that same cylinder unit that you saw Julius hold. This will be your ticket out. Don't Not try to find... Don't try to find another way out otherwise. I just also want to point out, I did pick up my C4 before leaving earlier. Okay. So yeah, just make sure you, you, you keep that in your inventory. Alright, so with that said, he leaves the transmat device ready for you guys to go, so whenever you want to leave... And... So, DB kind of pops up to you, Eros, and goes, do you think we should stop by the city first before we go? Um, Maybe kind of resupply, and, and he kind of looks to the rest of the group and maybe get a little rest? Duh. We do need to do a little bit of resupply. Maybe get something to eat while we're there. <laughs> You know, um, get some some stuff. You know, we need some other things. Well, the only issue with going back to the city is that if we go back, we're going to be questioned by the Vanguard. Because we went straight to South Africa after the Reef. They're going to want to know how everything in the Reef went and all that. And if they see that we went to the Cosmodrone on our flight logs, yeah, that's going to raise some questions. DB kind of looks back, well, I mean, shouldn't we tell them what, what's happening? Sometimes, yes, sometimes no. Well, and, and DB kind of just looks back to you or else and goes, well, I mean, we need their help, right? We will. Uh, we're going to... Right now, I think it probably, if we do go back, we're going to have more problems to deal with then. I 
And DB just, he, he kind of looks around and goes, well, all right, but I don't know. I, I think we need to tell them. I think we need to, we need to get more people in on this and, and we need to, we need to gather people and try and take this guy down. Yeah, but who's going to honestly believe that we're fighting a man that could run at Mach 2? We're going to be looked at as if we're fucking insane. I mean, we have the footage. There is proof of what he's done. Can I point out the times of old when people would think even footage was doctored and faked? But there will still be those few that probably not in the right mind but still believe us. People Paradox. in the right mind wouldn't believe that somebody could Are run the insane up. really an asset? I mean, you're talking to one right now. I wouldn't really call you insane. I'm not talking about me. Paradox kind of chimes in and goes, it may be best to limit their involvement until we have more concrete evidence into you know where we can strike. And Paradox just kind of goes, we can't catch him off guard. So if we can't do that, He's gonna he's gonna know what's coming. So we have to figure out how he's getting his information. If he if it's from the future, then we already know I don't know, maybe is there a way we can I don't know, alter fate? How can he know everything that we're going to do before we do? Honestly, wish I knew that myself. And Paradox just kind of, mm. lo he's looking around and just goes, ah. I've racked my brain on this, literally, and I can't think of how we can catch him, or how we can slow him down, or stop him. Like, in in any sense, like even if, mm. well, I don't know. Let's let's. Is there a way somewhere we can maybe get additional supplies without going to the last city? Possibly. Depends on how chill these people are. I only met them once. Oh, Par Paradox looks um, over and he goes, Oh, you, you're referring to that not-so-nice village. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Um, I mean, it'd also be good to just check in on them and see if they're doing well. But it might not be best if four Guardians showed up and maybe just me. Well... What if we just sort of sell our way into the city, get supplies, or send one person to get supplies, and everyone else just kind of hangs that out? You know? Oh, if I go in, I'm going to get questioned. <laughs> yeah, that, that's per Paradox, just he looks over to Eros. You can stealth your way in. Yes, I can. I can try. And pull from there. But, and Paradox looks over and goes, we're going off grid and we're going AWOL. This, are you sure this is going to be a good idea? I don't know. But if this god hand is still ahead of us on every step, he'd know where we're going already. But what really bothers me is how. How can he know where we're going? I'm just and kind of Paradox just kind of he, he he slowly just kind of looks over at at your chest, Elias, where you're keeping that no, that pad, and he goes, "Let's follow the lead." 
I'm gonna I... take out that book. Maybe I should have read it. <laughs> the data pad? Either <laughs> that or the novel that I fucking picked up earlier from the captain. Didn't read it. Uh... Well, it's it's two different things. So do you want the novel or do you want the data pad? <laughs> I'll take the data pad. Okay. Uh... The data pad Boy, gives you a detailed outline of this facility that was basically a dark matter collector it basically the way it works is that they would launch out these satellites that would basically collect the dark matter and they would retrieve the satellites mm -hmm. and it would be processed through this facility from what you're able to see is the facility did exist um during the golden age um the reason it's on the dark side of the moon is because it was a, a secret facility that was meant to be kept away from the public which is why it's not known to anyone including the vanguard they are not aware of the, the, this place. You've never heard of it. It's not on any known maps that the city has on the moon. This is like Area 51. It's like a black ops site. Yeah, maybe this is best kept off the grid from the Vanguard. Because knowing some things are best left unsaid. And if we All go right. to them... We, like Malachi said, we might be putting them in danger right now. Be that as it may, it still would benefit us if we have their support. Paradox lo looks over and goes, I, I'm fine if this is the decision you want to go with, but I do need to voice that I believe we need their support. How about the support of a singular fire team? It's not that I don't support you. It, this is beyond that. You know that. Well, no, I'm talking about there's another fire team in the city that might be willing to help us. Who's that? I Paradox cannot. just looks no, no. Yes. No. Yes. Uh, are we going to fire team? You can't be. You, you no, no. Yeah. Do you yeah. remember what they did last time? Chicago was great. You know it was fun. Why do I get a bad feeling about this? Uh, <laughs> it, uh, we have some entertaining footage if you'd like to see somebody locked in a box. I want to point out you were trapped in one too. So, But I had the debris. I had an excuse. And mine was actually genuinely locked. Oh, a little lock stopped you. I had debris. I had concrete on me. Okay, I want to point out the only one of the two of us that actually did anything fucking cool was me. And that's throwing a fucking charge of C4 into its ship and causing it to crash. <laughs> yeah. you Which no one was happy free. about, by the way. You took down the building! <laughs> Paradox, compared to the craziness of this group and the other fire team, which one's crazier? Paradox just kind of like looks at you, looks back at the group, looks at you, looks back at the group. I... I don't know if I can answer that. <laughs> I take it this, this group. So we don't have much of a choice. Um, you know, like, how you're kind of... Well... Let's just say the warlock of their party and the hunter of their party is dating with a fucking Exo on the side that's a titan that likes to punch things. But doesn't talk much. Yeah, um, he's a wrecking ball. I don't know if you you know him. Five. Uh, Shall I roll another intelligence? Go for it. <laughs> I, why do I? Why do I know? Like what no these. Titan? Fucking rolls tonight! I swear. <laughs> I like how I like. Uh, I like See, I, it's so not like I'm not opposed to us rolling dice. It's just like adding in the numbers person. for everything in here gets fucking. Yeah, yeah it does get crazy <laughs> after seeing all this shit. I, I, seem to, I seem to know no other titans. Theo cannot pull a punch. <laughs> even though right now. you're in even the crucible. While I was in the crucible. I was working. You with don't other give a titans. shit about Literally, who's who. No, they're just—they're just, they're just a. 
you're a you, warm body three. It's future corpses. That's what they I are. was working with other <laughs> titans in my party. He before. is the Ryback of the no Crucible. One. Like he's just feed me more. <laughs> <laughs> this is so fucking cursed. Uh, so yeah, you you're just like eh, I have no idea who that is. Was yeah, playing Crucible? Yeah, um, Noble Five is um, he's a little sp- special. Yeah, uh, big quiet guy. You know, kind of, kind of nice, but just he's a wrecking ball. Um, oh yeah, I should still have footage of him throwing a desk out a fucking window. Yeah, one of you also has the the helicopter footage of him barreling through the outside of the facility, just that would also in. be me. <laughs> yeah, so Ash, uh, you're you're just seeing this on on the vid here. Just this striker titan just run through the building, and windows are subsequently smashing out at every wall that he's hitting, just on the outside mm-hmm. of the facility, and he's going around this entire stadium. And just bodies are flying <laughs> outside of the building. Fallen bodies are, are falling out. There's just debris, busts of glass, and just shit everywhere. And, and he's just running a circle through this stadium. And he's effective. I like this guy. I like his nickname. If we need... If, we, if, if you guys feel that we need more bodies, <laughs> that is... We could do worse. Well, it also eliminates the need of us going into the city because they're already in the city. Oh, you want them to get the supplies for us. And they can also help us. Okay. Um, See what I'm kind of putting down here? I, yeah. Um, and Paradox just kind of looks down and goes, Ugh. Oh, All right. Um, he he just looks up to you and goes, "Oh, don't you start." <laughs> All I right. Um, I'll put in the call when we get outside, I guess, and um, guess we'll figure it out from there then. And. Paradox just kind of zips it into your backpack, and he he says to you personally, and goes, "I still think this is a bad, bad idea. Could be worse." Mm. All right. So with that said, um, did you guys want to discuss anything else before you head out? I mean, what kind of spies are going to need? Well, probably more likely food for uh, those that can't eat. Uh, yeah, I mean, resupply of ammo, um, rations. Um, probably need better armor along the way. Um, we can see about that. Uh, we'll, we'll, ha- we'll have to talk to the guys about supplies, see what uh, we can come up with here. Um, I'll compile the list uh, to send over to uh, the Nova fi- Noble Five and this crew. Um, Did we ever name the fucking Warlock and his? Yeah, I, I, they're just. I have so many notes right now that I, I just don't have them right now. So I have, I have to dig through my notes to find. But yeah, I do have them. They're, they're named. I just. I gotta go dig it up somewhere here. <laughs> I've got like, I've got like ten different notepads with all kinds of different D and D notes and everything in it. I just, I have to find the right one. <laughs> I'm just happy I fucking remembered. No. Oh it, yeah, Ross and Juno. That, there Ross it is. Ross and Juno. Okay. R- Ross. Oh, Ross. Oh, Ross and Juno. It's like unironically named Boss. Damn. <laughs> you know he, he's it's probably his nickname that he loves to call himself. They go the worst situation. Or yeah, he just Ross. he answers the phone. Ross, the boss. What's up, buddy? <laughs> I would legitimately punch him if I heard him say that in person. Uh, 
I'm, 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 thank you for letting me know that. Uh, all right. But, uh, hacking him upside the head. Yeah. All right. But, um, I guess with that said, then, uh, I guess the only other matter is, um, you guys are, are going to start getting points of exhaustion here soon. Where did you want to go rest? Uh, we can technically rest in our ships and just sleep. That's fair. Until, and just have Ross, Juno, and Noble Five meet up with us. Okay. Um, so we'll, we'll kind of have that every for uh, next episode then. So I'll just kind of get everything together in order. So when we start next time, I'll, I'll just, I'll have everything ready. So we're getting you guys ammo, rations. More um, explosives. What do you want and how many? Just six more C4 charges. Okay, six I have a feeling more. I'm going to need it. I need six more bombs. C4 charges. Okay. <laughs> What'd you say, Mego? Sorry. Sorry. No, I, I was just making a joke. Oh, okay. <laughs> He's getting more explosives. <laughs> just more explosives. More explosives. More. 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 <laughs> more. All right. Ammo ration C four. Um. I I guess that that's gonna cover the majority. Of it. I'll we'll we'll check on upgrading armor. Okay. Uh, armor. Because I'll have to check on pricing too, because they're going to have to buy it for you as well. So yeah, I will. Okay. Although I, I'm close to getting something I can I can get, I do not strength to wear it, however. Mm, gotcha. Okay. He's weak. I'm one point off. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> okay. Um, so, everyone good on, on the supply order? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, and then if, if there's anything, like, you wanted specifically, like, if you wanted to, like, change weapons or something, or, like, change something out, just, uh, let me know ahead of time, and we can, we'll, I'll update it here as we go, but, um, I'll just get all this set up here for our next session, so we'll... Go ahead and get that. So yeah, doing kind of ending a little bit early just because with everything that we're going to be doing here on the next one, that's probably going to be a little busier. So um, I'm going to get that all ready to go here for our next go. But uh, yeah, like I said, it's a shorter episode, but I want to kind of get this section of it done because this is kind of leading more into uh the bigger stuff I had planned later on in the future. This was just kind of that stepping stone to get us there. So I'm finally happy we could get here because I've been sitting on this for weeks. And like every time we've been delaying, it's just like, fuck, I just want to get this out of my chest because I've been <laughs> holding I've been holding on to this for so long. It's like, please, I just got to get this out. Yeah, last week I was in a lot of fucking pain. So. Yeah, and and I wasn't gonna force you to do it just because like I I know how bad wisdom teeth pain is. Like you've been you've you've seen me through my terrible wisdom teeth pains too so i i know how that goes i'm not gonna force you into that so yeah it finally stopped hurting it doesn't hurt anymore so i don't know what that's good happened. yeah that's that's real good but yeah i i know how that much that sucks I'm, I'm not gonna force you go through especially with everything like you could have had you know a little more action if it wasn't for the poison because you you could have hit your con saves and gone right through it and it might not have been a big deal but because it did and yeah <laughs> that opening <laughs> super fucking cast though yeah you did i guess a lot of damage and actually like had had things even turned further south julius would have had to intervene and actually saved your asses <laughs> <laughs> yeah you probably didn't expect me to go the full fucking suicide route did you well, no, but I, again, this is why I have to be good at my improv, is because I have to be ready for you specifically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what was the other fucking things I did that uh, got a three for a fucking loop? Well, the, the throwing the 
the C4 at the ship and causing it to crash into the arena was was a derailing moment there, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a hard one. But that's fine. I mean, that's that's just a storyline that's just not going to get explored, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was just a scene of Matt Mercer ripping up the paper. Exactly. I'm just like... Yep, yeah, like, that's just it. Just... <laughs> Continue. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. <sighs> I need to go get some more of the chicken and dumplings I have in the slow cooker. And then it goes. Yeah. Down. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Bork, um, look over your character sheet. Um, if there's anything I missed, uh, do let me know. I, th I should have everything in there for you now, so... You're pretty much combat ready for next session already, but well, that's... it. Yeah, if, if there's anything I, I missed or anything you happen to catch, just uh, just let me know and I'll get you. I'll get you fixed up. All right. Mm, yeah. Oh shit. Uh, anybody who does does watch this, go get the D and D stuff for yourself from D and D Destiny Project .com. Go under get the game. You can find all the files there. Dave's link is in the description. The YouTube link to where all the past episodes are in there. They're cataloged under our playlist. Along with this yep. one soon. Ch check out our archive channel it. to get caught up on all our previous episodes. And, and uh, for the rest of you jokers, do you have anything to say or want to back your own channel if you have one? I know the other two don't, but Bork, you got anything? Sorry? Do you... Sorry. you stream at all? Do you want, you want to plug your <laughs> oh, channel no, at all? I don't. No, I don't. I don't. I'm okay, sorry. that's it. We got. No, that's fine. No, you. yeah. Well, I mean, like, it, we're, I, the I, I give everyone opportunity just to kind of plug your own stuff because why not? <laughs> like, because I, I stream every Monday. Uh, I'll be streaming again here Monday. Uh, I finished up all of Mass Effect, all four games. We're done. Now we're moving on to something new and fresh. Witcher. You're never done with Mass Effect. That's my my, fr my guy, I fit, I played through the entire Legendary Edition, all three games, and Andromeda. Andromeda. But have you done it, like, five Super. times? I've played the OG Mass Effects, like, so many times. Number two is by far my favorite. Not just the Legendary Edition. I have so many save games. That were just like full playthrough. I have so many like full playthroughs. Oh yeah, games. like I mean there before Legendary play. Edition, like I, I played that way back in the I must have played like I've done like two f at least two or three like full series playthroughs, like one through three, like from beginning to end. Like I've done it multiple times already, but this is the first time I did the whole thing on stream, beginning to end, including Andromeda, which and in nobody likes Andromeda, but I fucking beat that shit too. <laughs> Andromeda, I, I got my own issues with as far as being in the Mass Effect universe. Andromeda just has the issue of Drama. it's not about, there's not enough of the world, in my opinion. I'm... It's just the council races and the Krogan, which is like boring. Listen, Andromeda. what makes Andromeda so fucking boring is the fact that there are literally only two races in the entire galaxy the Ket and the Ankara. Yeah, to be fair though, that was kind of by design. But that's that's part of my way. problem with it is that like you can't be serious. In the Milky Way, how many fucking species do we have in Mass Effect? Actually, no. To be fair, they're not. It's only one. It's only like one cluster though. Uh, okay, true, but uh, it's <laughs> like, still like come on, many, man. There like aren't that you, many spacefaring species in like. The Astari, they... like, native cluster. It's just them. What happened? We're, we're, we're talking effect. Andromeda. <laughs> okay, um, while they're talking Andromeda it, and in, stuff, they in can't the gal it's right like, now. It's not like the Protheans, so, though. Like, you can't just, like, say, oh, like, they, these the guys were created by this super stuff. being that we'll no one seems to have weeks. an answer, like, how they came to be is just, like... <laughs> have a good night. God. Yeah, like... <laughs> literally, yeah, no. Cause they, <laughs> we're like, gonna keep talking. They literally just, like... So, My have a good night. Find the YouTube channel for the like, past episodes. 
This is episode seventeen four, out like, of sixteen. Even like the only other 17. race besides as soon as I get this one the council today, races and the tomorrow, uh, Krogan get any kind of screen time in that game. Tomorrow. Are the so. Batarians? I'll but have there's a good only night. Two see in two and weeks, both in the multiplayer. which will be yeah. So it's the like, Batarians get that will be the fifth of well, February. Uh, or, the Batarians me, are a whole the thirtieth of February. In, I don't know the why it's the games as well. Wrong way. It's the thirtieth of January. Like, like, I, I, I so miss the old like, like, <laughs> Have a good night. Like, Bye. 